Hi, it's Sarah with House Copper. Today we are going to revisit an, a topic I brought to um, this channel many years ago and I'm going to try and do this in a much more succinct way with some really great visuals. But we are going to discuss tin linings versus stainless steel linings. I still get this question all the time in emails, um, for my podcast, things like that. And I'm going to do some visuals on how the two linings interact with copper, how they both work in science, <laughs> and those kinds of things. So um, the first and foremost is that we're going to talk about is stainless lined copper cookware, its pros and its cons. The pros of stainless steel lined copper cookware are that the stainless steel being hard wears very well in terms of metal utensils, scraping, getting, uh, you know, lots of banging up on it. And it's, it's basically a stainless steel pot that has a copper exterior. So, um, you know, you can use it sort of like a stainless steel pot, even though there's copper on the outside. Um, so the lining is kind of, that's its pro. It's, it's, it's incredibly durable, like a stainless steel pot. Now, the one part of the science of this is that copper and stainless heat and cool at incredibly different rates. So copper is 25 times faster than stainless steel when it comes to conductivity and being able to heat and cool. That means that even if you have copper sitting next to stainless steel, the copper does not magically transfer its conductive properties to the stainless steel. Stainless steel will always be stainless steel. It will not heat and cool faster just because it's sitting next to copper. Just like copper is not going to heat and cool slower because it's sitting next to stainless. Stainless doesn't have a way to magically give its slower properties to copper. So that's um, something that people don't always talk about or the mechanics of it don't make sense. Part of the reason why that transference of um, properties doesn't happen is because copper and stainless do not bond on a molecular level. This means that because stainless holds iron and copper does not, so we have stainless the ferrous metal and copper the non-ferrous metal, they cannot bond. The best we can do is to kind of create almost like nanostructures on a very tiny level and almost do like a like a Velcro between the two metals using heat and pressure and rolling. And you can kind of create a bimetal that way, but they are not exchanging an electron on the, molec on the molecular level. They just can't. Science fact. So you're still dealing with essentially a, a piece of stainless and a piece of copper sitting next to each other. They're heating and cooling at such dramatic rates um, in difference that eventually they will pop apart. I have lost track of the amount of times I've had people come to me who have said the copper bottoms on their stainless pan have fallen off, can I repair it? No, I mean, I can glue it on, but I can't press it back on. It's dead, it's ruined. Uh, Bob has gotten pieces of stainless pots in when I'm at the tin shop and they're copper on the outside, stainless on the inside. And because people have used such high temperatures, with the stainless interior, they have literally burned the copper off and it's just flaking off that thin layer of copper. Again, irreparable. You can also have delamination. I've had people come to me and say, I have these beautiful pots, I got them in France, I've had them 25 years, and now the stainless insert has lifted out. I could glue it back in, but I can't actually fix it. This is another piece that's from about the 1970s. You can see here the copper has gotten so hot um, and has cooled at such a different rate from the stainless that it had nowhere to go once it was heating and cooling and kind of spreading and the crystal structures of the copper were kind of moving so fast and the stainless on the other side was not that the copper, the extra kind of copper structure, crystal structures that were stretching had nowhere to go. And so it started to delaminate. Um, there's another part here, a better representation of it right there. The thin, thin, thin layer of copper is delaminating from the much thicker layer of stainless steel. And again, 
This is not repairable. Once the two metals separate, they're kind of done and dusted. And that has nothing to do with the fact that stainless is a bad interior for copper. It's just, it doesn't last as long. And when it does eventually not work anymore and it pops apart, you can't fix it. I can't as a coppersmith fix that. No coppersmith can fix that. Um, so your pros again for stainless line copper, you can beat them up with every metal utensil you want. The cons are that eventually they will just due to the nature of the science of conductivity, pop apart and not be fixable. You also should not put stainless steel lined copper in a dishwasher. I know that you can do that with stainless steel pots, but the copper itself is still really soft, really porous, and our dishwashing soaps are not very nice to said copper exteriors. The tin lined copper pots have both pros and cons as well. The, the cons being tin is very soft, so it will, with time and use and poor uh, taking care ofness, it will uh, flake off, it will scratch easy, it will, um, it'll wear down with um, cleaning and um, daily use, even if you're using only the correct silicone and wood utensils. And so you have to have it relined, which is an ongoing expense with keeping up your, your tin line copper pots. So um, I'm gonna show you, so this is a skillet. Obviously the tin will discolor in a way. Um, stainless will discolor too with use. It will kind of season. So you can't go by color because that's irrelevant in this case. They both will discolor. But tin will eventually, like the top layers might slowly flake off. There's still tin there, it's just not a shiny. It's not the shiny layer. So the cons are, it's a little more fragile. People also um, have uh, trouble keeping the temperature at the right uh, level for tin line copper pots. Again, I've had a lot of people come to me and say, the tin like melted, like what's wrong with it? Nothing, you overheated it. No, I don't think we did. I promise you, you don't have magic tin in your skillet. Tin melts at about 449 degrees Fahrenheit, so 450, right? It doesn't melt at 200, it doesn't melt at 375, melts at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. If your tin is soft and melting in your copper pot, you overheated it, period, science fact, unless you've discovered magic tin. So I just feel like I need to say that a lot because I get a lot of people who will refute that and say, no, 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 we didn't, and it's like, I swear you did. And I'll send it to the other tinners and show them photos and say, what do you think happened? They're like, they, they overheated it. They, they melted it. So I promise if the tin is getting melted, it's overheated, period. But the nice thing, it's kind of like the double-edged sword. Yes, you have to send tin line copper off to get retinned every, I don't know, it depends on how, beat, how much you beat it up, every 10, 15, 25 years, but it can be fixed. So that's, that's a, that's a pro, you you will be able to have it relined for centuries and it'll never go in a landfill, it'll never pop apart. Just like stainless lined copper, you should not put tin lined copper in the dishwasher. So all of them should be hand washed if you wanna take care of them the right way. And um, they all really should, uh, will hold up to the same amount of hand, the kind of hand polishing that you do no matter what. So that's kind of an even Steven there too. But anyway, that is, um, that's kind of your differences. Oh, and also the reason too why this doesn't pop apart um, and why it just wears down with use is because as I've mentioned before, tin and copper do bond on a molecular level. So when I or any other tinsmith retins a copper pot with tin lining, the, the tin and the copper with the aid of flux will bond on a molecular level and there will be one atom thick where they've exchanged electrons and that has allowed copper to infuse tin with its conductivity properties. Tin also is more conductive than stainless, but you still are dealing with that molecular bonding and exchange, which really helps with um, the copper's conductivity pushing through the tin and you have a much more responsive tool than something lined with stainless, which 
is inherently going to be 25 times slower because of that stainless lining. You also need far less heat when you're dealing with a tin lined copper skillet. Um, because the tin is also as reactive as the copper, you need far less heat for far shorter amounts of time to get the same results as you would in a stainless lined copper pot. So if you care about energy, you care about your heating bill and your gas bill, and you care about you know being green, the tin lined copper is going to give you that type of smaller fo footprint if you care. Anyway, this is just me stating the science facts. I know that there is a ongoing debate about what's better, stainless lined copper cookware and tin lined copper cookware, and always somebody throws in nickel lined copper cookware. I obviously, for my own reasons, prefer tin lined copper strictly because I like something that's renewable and that can be fixed no matter what happens to it. And I like that it doesn't go in a landfill. Um, I like that it's nonstick. But some people really do prefer the stainless because they really get nervous cooking with tin. And that's understandable too. There's no right and there's no wrong. There's just science and there's just molecular and mechanical bonds and conductivity rates. And that's all that I was imparting today in this 11 minute video. So thank you for watching. Let me know any thoughts, comments, put your own, um, feelings below. I love to hear it and it's how we share and learn. You can find me on Instagram at House Copper, on Facebook at House Copper and Cookware, and pick up copper, iron, and clay anywhere books are sold. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.